Today, we are going to look into the depths of my baby, of my film, <laughs> of my film project file. Check it. Hey guys, Levi Allen here, and welcome to The Left Coast. Today we're starting something pretty special. We've done a few tutorials so far on the behind the scenes making of process of my film, but now we're diving into a series that I'm really excited about. I was trying to think about the best way that I could convey to you guys what I've learned about story and how I went about developing and bringing the story of Untethered to life. This is a little bit challenging as the film is already made, and I figured the best way I could do this is actually walking you through the process that I went to actually edit the film. Because in the editing process, I made a lot of decisions that helped bring this film to life. This video is sort of an intro video of sorts where I'm going to answer a question from Caleb Wojcik. Caleb Wojcik from DIY Video Guy asked me if I could kind of show the inside of my premiere project. So I'm going to do that today. And this is sort of kicking off the documentary editing series. So this series is going to be how to edit a documentary. But if you're not planning on making a documentary, don't worry. This tutorial definitely applies to you. So this series is going to include the very basic of the basic, but also get pretty advanced. So I know some of you guys already know a ton about editing, but I encourage you to stick it through with this series because there's going to be little things that you pick up that are really going to bring your editing to the next level. So that's enough talking for now. I hope you enjoy this. Let's dive into my premiere project file. Okay, so here we are inside of Premiere. And it's honestly a little bit eerie being back inside of this Premiere project file as uh, this project file was pretty much where I lived for about four months of my life. And it's pretty crazy that just, just this one file can represent so much uh, of my work and my love poured into this project. But uh, let's start poking around my home here and I'll show you some of the unique factors of how I went about building out this edit. That's kind of the biggest takeaway that I hope you are able to get from this first look into this edit is, you know, how did I go about developing and fleshing out uh, this project? How did I bring my B-roll into Premiere, find out what my story was, and turn that into a film? Now, obviously, that's what my overarching editing a documentary theme is, and I'm going to go into lots of depth in future videos. Uh, so this is kind of just a sneak peek, but there is great things that you'll be able to take out of this. And if you have any questions, in the comments of this video is going to be a great place to put those. So right down here, this is my edit. Look at that. It's crazy that that is like four months of work. Isn't that bonkers? That's four months of work right there, all 30 minutes of that film. But uh, we're not going to start there. We're going to start over here in my project panel. And I'm going to show you kind of how I organize things. I love numbers, so I go with numbers. I don't do it the same every time, but what I do, I stick with till the end of the project. Up here, it's kind of self-explanatory. This is my master's folder. That's where all the footage gets imported into. And then out of that is where I pick my selects and bring it into sequences. So that brings us down to one of the most important folders in this project, and that is the sequences folder. And let's take a look inside there and kind of poke around a little bit. In here, I have several folders. The interview string outs is one of the important ones, but also the B-roll selects is another really important one. But if we look into interview string outs, these are all the interviews that I did and they're strung out. What that means is, is we can open one of them here and take a look. So this is an, this is an interview I didn't actually end up using in the film. Um, so let's not use that one. How about that, Levi? Let's go to interview with Adam. Okay, so this is my string out with my interview with Adam. And what that means is I go through the interview, I cut out all the bits where I'm talking, and then I bring all the areas that I like of what they said to the top row. This is kind of the simplest way that I do an interview string out. So all this stuff right here is the answers that Adam said that I liked. And I do that with every interview. One thing that I learned partway into this project, which ended up saving me tons and tons of time, is I'd create these black video layers. And then over top of certain sections of them talking, 
what I do is I cut those sections out and then I would shift R to rename them. And I would rename them what they were saying at that given time, or just like a keyword that would tip me off to what they were saying. So free solo discussion. So now when I look at that, I go, oh yeah, this is the section where he's talking about free solo discussion. I only started using this method partway in and I actually made these black videos over one of my other editing sequences. But if I could go back and do this project again, I would have been typing out those little nuggets over top of all the sections that I liked. So that way I could have found things quicker. And I did that with Spencer's interview that I shot later. Um, I had learned and I did these little black video layers with the rename. This is an amazing way to save tons of time. Uh, and I'm gonna go into depth in that when I talk about editing interviews. Those stay pretty much untouched once they've been strung out. But I've been running ahead of myself a little bit because there's actually something more important that happened first. What I did before I shot a lot of the interviews and before I even edited interviews was I edited together my B-roll. This film was so B-roll driven that I needed to find out what narrative could I carve out of the B-roll that I shot and then tie that together with interviews afterwards. So pretty much I would break up B-roll sections into all the different areas that I thought were necessary and that I'd want to grab footage from later. So I have all these sequences here that were relevant. For different athletes, I would make select sequences for them and I pretty much just made B-roll select sequences for everything. Once I made my B-roll select sequences, then I tried to start doing story builds. And so I'm gonna jump down here to this folder called the Highline Film. Inside of the Highline Film folder is where things got really interesting. These are the sequences where I actually started building the film. So under here you can see film building, and these are the sequences that I was actively building my film out of. So right here you can see B-roll V3. So that means it's the B-roll sequence version three. And so if we go into the sequence, you can see here, these are my B-roll sections. And this was all built out from those select sequences that I had previous. So those select sequences, once I pick my selects from them, they never get touched again. I only pull from those. So I pulled from those and built out these different segments inside of my B-roll sequence here. And these little segments are all the different potential sections of my film. So this right here is the water lining footage. This right here is the rigging the line on the chief footage. And it's from this sequence of B-roll that I started to get an idea of the shape that this film could take. Once I got an idea of that, I was jotting down lots of notes, and then I went out and shot my interviews with Spencer. This was an important step for me because I knew the B-roll that I had. I knew what I needed to get from Spencer in the interview to kind of tie that all together. So that was a really important step. So that's kind of the B-roll sequence, and that's version three. I keep all the previous versions, uh, but I'll explain that just a little more in a moment. And this next one, this one's called the radio edit. So the next sequence of interest is actually this radio edit. And what the radio edit was is I would take all the selects from my interviews and put them in this sequence. And I would try to build them in an order and in a grouping that was interesting. A good rule of thumb for a radio edit is, is what they're saying interesting all the way through? So this is important without B-roll. And I would toil over refining this radio edit before I even thought about adding the B-roll back over top. And this is where I really refined and sculpted what became sort of the story arc as far as what the interviews had. So these two steps happened first, the radio edit and the B-roll edit. And those two were then married into what I call the story build sequence. So if we go over to story build one, you can see here, this was the first sequence that I tried to start building the radio edit into the B-roll footage that I have. So you can see it's quite a bit disjointed, but what I was doing was all this footage here on these first layers, so this video layer one, this is all the talking. And I would bring in my B-roll from my B-roll selects sequence and try to build it out over top. And at each significant stage, I would duplicate the sequence and change the version number. This was so helpful because I could always go back and reference clips that I might have deleted earlier. And all those select sequences you saw before, I was constantly referencing back to those, trying to find clips that I know I had seen earlier that I might want to use now. So as you can see, I actually got to version 10. And there was quite immense changes that happened in that path. But down here, this is it. This is kind of like the, the last story build sequence 
that eventually became the locked sequence. So that's kind of the main look around inside of the sequence. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of show you some other little fun sequences in here before we take off. So as I said before, this was my locked sequence. Locking the sequence is an important step because that means you no longer change anything, which is pretty scary. But based off this is what the post-production sound people got the sound mix from. So they got all this sound stuff and the songs, and then they went off and made the sound mix. Another step that I had to do was we were color grading this film in DaVinci Resolve. And one of the best ways to bring your film into Resolve is to have what's called a flattened sequence. So I'm gonna bring that up here. And what a flattened sequence is, is pretty much all those video layers that you're used to seeing kind of all over the place are all brought down to one single layer. So you can just see, this is my entire film end to end. And this layer that's above it is actually only titles. So all of the visuals exist on this video layer one. That was then sent to Resolve, graded. All those clips were then brought back into Premiere. And I actually had to manually line up all those clips over top and then drop them over the flattened sequence that was there to begin with. The reason why I needed to do this is I had a lot of varying frame rates. I had speed ramps and I had some other things that were giving uh, DaVinci Resolve quite a challenging time doing the round trip. So I just had to do it manually, which, so you'll see, this is why it's important to lock your film at a certain point, because if any of this changed, it wouldn't line up with my sound mix down below. And, uh, and then I would have havoc. So that's the majority of what I wanted to show you in this Premiere product file. In the upcoming videos of this editing series, I'm gonna talk a lot more about the different steps and specifically the story building steps on how I went about sculpting my B-roll and combining it with the interview footage and eventually building out this sort of documentary narrative. So I hope you guys will find that really interesting. Hey guys, well, I hope you found that valuable. This is a quick look into my project file. I hope you learned something from that or got ideas of how to set up your project file in the future. Again, there's a bunch of editing tutorials coming in the future. I'm really excited to kind of walk you through this process of how Untethered came to life in the post-production studio. And uh, I really hope I can teach all that I know about storytelling and story development kind of through this format in the context of how to edit a documentary. That's all for now. You can watch all the previous tutorials as a part of this playlist. Please, if you like this, consider sharing, subscribing, commenting, and please join the Left Coast Collective so you can get these tutorials directly to your inbox. Remember, life's better when you make stuff.